Growing Series Podcast, powered by Cargill. Right now, there is a massive amount of interest in straight cutting canola. Growers across the prairies are having the discussion should I be swathing or should I be straight cutting? You're listening to the Growing Series Podcast, powered by Cargill and presented by Sean Haney and RealAgriculture.com, bringing you timely advice to help you achieve your goals. Today on the Growing Series Podcast, we're going to make sure that you have all the information that you need to make the best decision for your farm. Today's guest is Janelle Delage. She is an agronomist from Cargill, based in Saskatchewan, and we're going to talk Everything straight cutting. So Janelle, we're talking about straight cutting canola and how to plan and manage it through the throughout the season. Why do you why do you think that straight cutting canola is gaining so much in popularity? So I would say there's a number of reasons. It might not just be one, and it's likely going to differ from farm to farm. But you know, one of the main reasons that I've I've experienced is that you don't have to swath, and swathing is one of those operations where you need to have someone, you know, a different operator come in and lay windrows. And the sprayer guy, he's been on the sprayer all season. He's practiced, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about spraying later on. But the swather operator, he hasn't done it since last year, might be a new guy, gets on, and sometimes, you know, struggle with having nicely laid windrows. And the other thing about swathing is timing is so critical. It's this very short period of time where you need to get out there. You don't want to be too early losing yield and having green count. And you don't want to be out there too late when everything is starting to shatter. So have, being able to avoid that, that stress of swathing is a huge benefit. And I would say one of the other reasons why it's really caught on is some of the new varieties that are on the market. Uh, some of the varieties have a uh, higher uh, shatter resistance than the old varieties did which really allow you to feel more comfortable leaving canola standing out there, even if you might get some wind or it's maybe not tangled up extremely nice as we may have had to wait for in the past. And, and the other thing about uh, straight cutting is harvesting standing canola is one of the most beautiful things that you can imagine. It goes through the combine just amazing. It doesn't even sound like you're putting canola through it. So there is, there is actually something there, too, to say it's just fun to straight combine canola. You know, it's interesting you bring up swathing because my perception is that a lot of farms put the newer guy or newer lady – that's an, you know, on the harvest team, they're the one that gets to ride the swath, swather because we perceive it as an easier job. Not, but it's very, very critical because if that swath isn't laid properly, combining becomes a much, much more difficult task. And we have higher, we have a higher amount of uh, crop loss. If we think about, you know, I think about all the videos that, and interviews that we've done on Real Agriculture about swath timing. Every year we have to do a whole bunch because everyone's always asking when is the right time to swath. So it's not, we, it's, when we're thinking about straight cutting canola, it's not like swathing was this easy thing. We knew when to time it. You know, Canola Council's put out numbers where there's a high majority of people actually swath way too early because they have this perception they're better to be early than late. It's not exactly an easy task. So if we can figure out straight cutting, it actually combines that crop cutting and harvesting all in the same motion, less fuel, greater efficiency. It has a lot of place on a lot of farms. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, you hit on a lot of the keys there of why, why getting rid of swathing is uh, something that's pretty exciting on a lot of farms. Okay, so how do I decide if it has a fit on my farm? Like I'm in Lethbridge, the wind, there's always lots of wind. I may be a little bit scared to do it, or maybe I don't feel I have the right machinery. How do, how do I make sure that it, it's, it could be a right fit for me? Yeah, so I would say that, you know, especially if you're new to it, trying one of those varieties that has some pod shatter resistance built into them is a great place to start. And like anything else that we're trying on our farm, there's no need to seed the whole farm to it, right? Uh, it, it is a good good way to do a, a small trial, you know, maybe maybe a quarter section or something like that to understand if it is a good fit. And if you're in an area uh, with, you know, extreme winds and things like that, 
it, it might not be a fit. So it is important to assess what's going on and, and some of the risks, because there are also risks of having swaths laying out in those winds as well. So it's weighing the risk of what can happen to that swath versus what can happen to that standing canola on the farm. You know, and I think that's a very important point, is that if you are thinking about it and you have not done it in the past, and there's there are people who have been doing it for 15 years and have had great success. But if you are just, you know, if you're thinking about maybe we just got to kind of consider it is kind of catching on. We might have the right conditions, might be in the right place. Um, trying it on a few acres is actually a great way to sort of dip your toes, so to speak, and, and kind of test the waters. Yeah, absolutely. And then at that point, too, you, you, you learn a lot as well while you're doing that. You learn a lot about your fields and, and things like that. But then you also learn a lot about your equipment because it is a big change going from picking up swaths to straight combining. And if you go in too, you know, too much, your equipment might not be quite ready for it. And that would be the worst part to, to hit the field at harvest time and, and something be not quite right there. So that does also give you the opportunity to test your current, current equipment out in it as well. So if I'm thinking about doing some straight cutting, when do I got to decide if I'm going to do it or not? Is it a harvest time decision? Is it a decision you make at planting time or seeding? When, when do I have to kind of decide if I'm going to commit to it or not? So I, I personally like this to be a planning time decision. So because that allows you to pick a variety that may have some pod chatter resistance, especially if you're just getting into it. That also allows you to potentially pick some fields that may have some desirable traits when it comes to straight combine and canola. And, you know, those things are, you know, your fields with less variability, um, flatter fields, fields where the crop is kind of going to all come in at the same time. So I would really say that you you can make that decision at swath timing, but you're going to be a lot happier if you made that decision during your crop planning stage instead. Okay, so you mentioned when selecting your, your hybrid, and then you mentioned you know, some pod shatter resistance. Is there any other characteristics of the variety that are really critical in this planning? Um, I would say the other, you know, a couple of the other things that you may want to look for are, are plant, or crops or varieties that kind of knit themselves together fairly well. Um, and I, I would also say varieties that um, you, you don't want a whole bunch of lodging and anything like that that causes variability. So you really want a uniform, nice stand that's well knit together. Okay, so I th- this this is an area where I find people tend to disagree with each other because I you know I've heard you want don't want a variety that lodges, but I've heard some people say that they actually like a variety that sort of has a slight lean to it. Do, do you do you agree with that, or does that make sense? Yeah, I would say that lodging and leaning are definitely different things. Um, a nice lean is is good because your your crops are already kind of laying on each other, if that makes sense. I guess in my mind, lodging is when it's laying flat on the ground. And that, that can sometimes happen early enough that it actually affects the evenness of maturity. So um, I, I use those words quite differently um, and, and want to make sure that that distinction is made because a crop that is leaning over and well knit together can be a great a great option for straight combining, but a lodged crop that's uneven and hard to pick up can be a lot more difficult. What about seeding rates? So canola is one of those crops where we have these rules. We always seed it at certain rates. What 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 do we need to take into consideration if we're thinking about straight cutting, and th- and thinking about how heavy we're going to seed the crop? Yeah, so seeding rate is one of those those ones that can be, you know, a bit of a misnomer when we talk about seeding rate. It's really about plant stand, in my mind. You don't want to make sure that um, you have a nice, even plant stand. So that's, you know, as a result of not putting down or not having too few plants, in my mind. So I, I can't really say here and now your seeding rate should be X when it's really about doing calculation to figure out that you're getting an adequate plant stand. Because really, that's really what this is all about, is having a nice, even plant stand. Okay, so and and that's the case whether you're swathing or you're straight cutting. So really, there should be limited change in your seeding rate. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, I'm saying there should be very limited change in your seating rate. We don't want guys to go crazy and, you know, be seating at an extremely heavy rate because um, there's no need. That's that's kind of what they're showing is that there's not a huge need to be going at, a, at an extremely heavy seating rate. So just kind of stick to what you have been as long as you're getting that, that plant stand that you desire. So all this money you're going to save on fuel because you're not running a swather, don't put it all into seed costs. Is that what you're saying? Don't put it all into your seed. No. <laughs> put it in your back pocket. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Janelle, what else should we think about? So we got the in-crop. Uh, do I need to do anything different in-crop if I'm planning on straight cutting? You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's a whole lot different than, than what we do for swathing, but maybe what straight cutting does is it just amplifies the importance of some of these things. So good weed control is, is something that you want to make sure that you have because, you know, when you lay a windrow when you're swathing, a lot of those, those weeds dry up and, and kind of disappear in the swath and it's, it's not really an issue. Whereas with straight combining, you know, depending if you're deciding what you're doing for your pre-harvest, those, those, having those weeds not in the crop might be a little bit more, more important. But, you know, I, I would want to say that you probably want to do the same thing in your swath fields as well. The other thing in disease management, uh, making sure that your sclerotinia, black leg are under control, just that you're not having any unevenness as a result of those diseases as well. So one of the things I've found is that the, people are in two different camps. There's the people that will never try it because they don't think it'll ever work. And there's the people that have been doing it for 10 to 15 years and do it no matter what. Uh, and and I, I've often thought that in terms of straight cutting canola, this isn't an all or none scenario. You can have land that you straight cut and there's land that you swath. It's similar to tillage. Some fields I cultivate, some fields I don't, depending on the situation and maybe the given year and the conditions. Do you agree with that? I strongly agree with that. And I think of that as a bit of a harvest management plan. And how, so for, you know, what I've seen is that with swathing, you're often able to get into those fields a little bit earlier and getting that combine running. So depending on when stuff's going to come in, you know, on, on my farm and a lot of our customers, what we talk about is have, making sure that you have some swath to canola because that will allow you to get in, you know, a few days, maybe even up to a week earlier than you can your standing canola. So what that allows you to do is spread out the workload a little bit, spread out your risk as part of a plan to have some swath and some straight combine canola. Okay, Janelle, you've convinced me. So I'm I'm all in now. I'm you know I'm listening to this podcast. I'm convinced. I'm going to be straight cutting my canola. How do I know when it's ready to be combined? I would say that part of what we've done as part of our harvest management plan is assess whether um, a pre-harvest application of herbicide was required, and what that pre-harvest app allows for is some increased dry down of any weeds that may be present after your in crop. And what it also does is it allows the canola to dry down a little bit, which makes it potentially a little bit earlier to get out there with the combine, allowing the, you know, the canola straw to go through the combine earlier. And, I mean, you'll know it's ready, very similar to when you're picking up swaths. You want that, those green count to be down, and, I mean, it needs to go through the combine. So, you know, making sure that you're within that 10% moisture range as well, so it's it's uh, one of those things where not maybe not driving by the road, you're going to want to get out into the field and, and do some hand thrashing to see if that canola is ready to go. And, uh, you know, we're getting, by going to straight cutting, we're eliminating the swather, but is there other equipment that I'm going to need that I wouldn't have needed otherwise? Maybe not other equipment on the farm, but, you know, other equipment for your canola. So doing that um, that pre-harvest spray application. It's a pretty busy time of year to have a sprayer going for sure. So that is something to consider when you're considering your, um, your manpower plan, because, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly big advocate of, of doing some, some pre-harvest application for weed control and crop dry down. So it's not a new piece of equipment, but it is a different way to think about how your manpower is going to be used during harvest. And there are some different things, potentially different headers might be more effective straight combine and canola than, you know, what you've used in the past for your peas and lentils or wheat. 
So that, that is why it is always nice to try maybe a little bit small to see what's going to work for your equipment and then um, move on from there. Janelle, I really want to thank you for being a part of this podcast and really enlightening us on some of the advantages of thinking about straight cutting canola on your farm. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Growing Series podcast, powered by Cargill and presented by Sean Haney and RealAgriculture.com. Cargill's experts are ready to help you make the best decisions for your farm. Find more advice at cargillgrows.ca.